Hi there, it's Katerina, the Gourmet Goddess, Relationship Coach, and Reiki Master. I am here today doing shortbread, whipped shortbread. One of my friends in the early days of cooking um, gave me this recipe and it is amazing. It's really a good recipe. So I want to share it with you today because Christmas is coming up. Um, it's December 1st tomorrow and so it's kind of an exciting time of year. So the first thing we're going to do is to take some butter and vanilla and we're going to uh, whip it together. This is called whipped shortbread. And so we've got a pound of butter and a teaspoon of vanilla. And so what we're going to do is we're going to whip this up and really carefully to start with because you never know, right? And then you're going to scrape down the butter once it's all whipped in together. You don't want to put the vanilla into the, um, into the flour right away because it kind of gets stuck there and then it becomes kind of a big mushy mess. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep moving this around a little bit in the blender until it's all kind of blended up together. And the butter gets nice and whipped and soft. And there you go, it's all nicely put together. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a few things. First we're going to scrape down the bowl because that's super important to get everything incorporated. And then we're going to add a few little things. This is really one of my kids' favorite recipes at Christmas time, and um, I love making it too. It's pretty. Now you may not have a piping bag, and that's okay. You can do it in little balls or um, rectangles, whatever shape you want to do them in. I just really enjoy using a piping bag, and so I use the uh, number seven star tip for it, just in case you needed to know that. All right, so we've got this pretty much blended in together, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a cup of icing sugar to it. I'm getting so professional here. Look at this. I've got everything in bowls and everything. A cup of icing sugar and then it's going to be a half a cup of cornstarch. I should do this this way. And we're going to slowly start this up again because the problem is if you start it up with all that stuff in there already, then it's just going to go all over the place. So start it slowly. Be careful when you're doing this though because the blade is um, in rotating and you don't really want to hurt yourself. <laughs> I've done it a couple of times, so I'm okay with it. <laughs> okay, and so then the next thing that we're going to be adding is two and a half cups of flour. And then pretty much that's the recipe. All we have to do then is just to make it sure it's really well incorporated. And then put it into the piping bag, and then I'm going to start piping it. At the end of it, on this particular occasion, I want to put in some um, roasted um, hazelnuts that I've ground up. Okay. So that's just going to be over the top just to give it an extra flavor. You can add things like um, lemon rind, so lemon zest you can add, you can add um, orange zest, you can add all kinds of little things. You can dip it in chocolate if you like. There's so many different ways to do shortbread. It's really fun. So I'm just doing a little bit at a time here. See how it's all coming together? That's what you want right there. And so I'm going to add the last of the flour. This is looking very, very nice. So Christmas is such a great time of year. You know, we get into all these unhealthy eating habits and, you know, eating things like butter and shortbread and all that sort of thing. But honestly, it's once a year. I mean, why not? You know, <laughs> let's have some fun with it have the music going and have some fun with it. All right, so let's talk, while I'm doing that, let's talk about the relationship question of the day. I've, I've been talking a lot to a good friend of mine and she was talking about boundaries and uh, rules and boundaries versus rules. And so we were talking about that and I thought, well, you know, I'm gonna post about that. So I did and I've had a few interesting comments from people and so I thought I'd mention it here today. Boundaries versus rules in a relationship. If you're setting healthy boundaries with someone, you're setting healthy boundaries for yourself. And that means you can open a conversation about what the line is, how, how definite it is, and whether you want somebody to cross that line or not. And if you're setting healthy boundaries, you really don't want somebody crossing that line. If you're making rules within your relationship, you can't do this, you can't do this, you can only do this, that sort of thing, that's not going to work that is um, setting it in stone and oftentimes people will just kind of go okay 
okay, yeah, you have your rules, I'll just go someplace else. And that's okay too. But you, you know, maybe setting healthy boundaries is just the better way. So you know, that might open up a conversation for you and some of your friends or your partner. So think about that and think about where you stand on your boundaries and your rules. Is it rules that you've made with your partner? Or are there healthy boundaries set up? And if you love yourself, and if you honor yourself and, and know what your values and needs are, and know that you deserve everything, you deserve absolutely everything, whether you're male or female, it doesn't matter, you deserve everything. You deserve the best. So set healthy boundaries with your partner, either right at the beginning or when you're ready to do so, when you're aware of how things are within your, within your values and needs system, and then go from there. It's an awesome way to live. It's joyous, it's blissful, and it gives you a lot of freedom. Anyway, so our dough is done, and we're ready to move on to the next part here. All right, I'm gonna put it into the piping bag. I'm gonna leave that there because it's kind of on there. And so now I'm gonna move this into the piping bag a little bit at a time here. Use my hands. So I've got a number seven star tip at the, at the um, inside of the piping bag. And that's what I usually use every year. And what you wanna do is you don't wanna pack it in too tightly. You just wanna use some of the dough to start with, okay? You wanna see how the butter is behaving because sometimes the butter is maybe a little bit too hard still and you want to make sure that it's soft enough so that you can pipe it but not so soft that it becomes really squishy. So I'm just going to start with a little bit at the very beginning and kind of push it down, uh, twist the piping bag and then see if it comes out easily and it does so that's perfect. So I'm going to move these out of the way. My candle. <laughs> And I'm going to start piping this out here. So what you want to do is to do a little circle and then just make it a smaller circle on the inside and then just kind of turn it at the top like that and it comes out like a little rosette, okay? So we're going to do that again. I used to do this a lot when I was cooking professionally. Man, I spent a lot of hours doing these things at Christmas time. See how that goes? And then when they come out of the oven, they're going to look absolutely gorgeous. They do spread out a little bit, but not very much. That's perfect. So I'm going to do the rest of them and I'll come right back. All right, so we're doing the last one. And now it's going to be ready to go into the oven. Just a little curl at the end there, tap it down, and it's awesome. I'm just going to add a little bit of hazelnuts over the top. Look at that. That's going to be absolutely gorgeous. I love hazelnuts. I don't know about you guys, but hazelnuts and pecans are my favorites. You can also put icing sugar on this afterwards. I mean, there's so many different ways to do shortbread. And this will roast it up nicely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in a 300 oven for about 20 minutes. Just check them as you go. Some hot ovens are hotter than others. So in they go, and we'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I have pulled them out of the oven. They look good, they smell good. And I just need to transfer them to a cooling rack and then let them cool for a while. Um, as they cool, they're gonna kind of set a little bit and they're just perfectly cooked. You don't want them to be dark, too dark around the outside edges. They're just supposed to be nice and creamy and smooth. So in the meantime, I really hope that you enjoy these cookies. And if you have any questions around relationships, boundaries, you know, versus rules or around your values and needs, because that's really important these days. People often aren't really figuring out what their values and their needs are and they don't know where they need help so sometimes it's a good idea to call a coach and that would happen to be me. So if you have any questions around relationships or cooking or you just want to book a session with me then just email me at lifecoachkaterina at gmail.com. I'm looking forward to next week. It's going to be German stolen my way next week. I'm going to the Great Cup so I'll talk to you later. Bye!